This is the 89th day in the Hamas-Israel war and I'm Yair Pinto reporting to you from Israel on my way back into the Gaza Strip. Whoever is behind the execution of the Salah El Arari and his men in Beirut yesterday did an excellent job. Okay, listen, whoever made this is a genius. Incredibly accurate execution, high quality intelligence, in real time and sharp and a deadly blow in the heart of an Arab capital which terminated one of Israel's worst enemies. Well done to whoever did it. Ashvir Salah El Aruri, who was terminated in a building that served as a Hamas office in Daria, a Hezbollah stronghold in the south of the Lebanese capital Beirut. By the way, along with El Arari, about five other people were neutralized and at least two of them were defined as commanders in the Hamas terror organization. El Arari is considered one of the founders of the military wing of Hamas, Izadin El Qassam Brigades. In recent years, he was considered the rising star of Hamas while enjoying his close ties with the Shiite axis that includes Iran, Hezbollah, and Islamic Jihad. The definition of his position until his assassination was deputy chairman of the political bureau of Hamas. But he was busy 24 hours a day with one thing, financing and directing terrorist attacks with an emphasis on Judea and Samaria in Israel. I must say, that on the assumption that Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, estimates that Israel carried out the assassination yesterday in the heart of Beirut's Daria, because that is what Hezbollah said, he is now facing a difficult dilemma. He looks at the apartment where the terrorist leaders were neutralized, that is, what is left of it, and asks himself if he wants all of Beirut and his people to face the same fate in two days or two weeks. The IDF spokesman said in response to accusations that Israel carried out the assassination that there is no comment on the issue and that the IDF continues to deal with fighting and defending the country. In Gaza City, the fighters of the 401 combat team carried out a targeted raid on a central building of the Eastern Outpost. The Eastern Outpost is a strategic center of the terrorist organization Hamas in Gaza City, where operations rooms are used to manage the fightings in the entire Gaza Strip. The terror stronghold includes 37 buildings located in the heart of a civilian population area in the vicinity of residential buildings, schools, and hospitals. Beneath the compound, the fighters found an underground control bunker of the terrorist organization Hamas, from which the organization's commanders conducted the fighting in the Gaza Strip. The underground complex is at a depth of about 20 meters and includes a large operational room and long-term living spaces that belong to the commanders of the military wing of the terrorist organization Hamas. In addition, during searches that were conducted out in the area, many weapons and media technologies were found. In the same compound, the fighters of the Shaked Battalion from the 401st Combat Command Team located five central shafts tens of meters deep which are connected to each other and create an extensive tunnel route that allows access to the control pit and the underground space. In one of the shafts, soldiers of the Shaldag Special Forces IDF unit entered the tunnel and waged face-to-face -face combat against Hamas terrorists underground in the depths of the tunnels. All the terrorists were neutralized. While the underground operation took place in the eastern outpost complex, fighters of the combat team number 52 identified a building from which Hamas terrorists were opening fire and responded by raiding that building. During the raid, there was a heavy exchange of fire from the upper floors of the building. 
the fighters attempted to contact their outside support while evacuating the wounded and returned fire towards the terrorists. Later, the encounter expanded to other buildings in the area of the outpost. IDF fighters of the battalion and forces from the Shaldag Special Forces Unit eliminated the terrorist squad. After that, the 601st Engineering Battalion and the Yalam unit destroyed an entire tunnel route that was discovered. In the El Buraj area, fighters of the 188th Golani combat teams located weapons, rockets, tunnel shafts, and Hamas training and intelligence materials in many houses. During the scans of the combat team, the fighters located long-range rockets with a range of 20 kilometers inside a family's home. Another weapon used by the terrorist organization Hamas was also found inside the house. The rockets were destroyed and the means of warfare was confiscated. Lieutenant Colonel Yoni, the commander of the IDF forces, stated yesterday, <laughs> Last week, in Khan Yunis, Givari fighters carried out an attack in the area of Neis Wahila, where they found a dense urban area and fought terrorists at close range. During the recorded battle, the fighters eliminated many terrorists that were attempting to harm the soldiers by shooting and attaching explosive charges to IDF vehicles. In addition, the fighters identified a number of suspects who were hiding among women and children who were marching with a white flag in their hands. The IDF fighters arrested the terrorists and during their investigation, the suspects turned out to be terrorists who participated in the 7th of October massacre attacks against Israeli civilians. During a raid by the forces in the Darj Tufa area in Gaza, the fighters took over terrorist infrastructure located the house of the commander of the Gaza City Brigade, thus allowing the entry of special forces to conduct searches. As part of the fighting, the forces encountered terrorists and fought short-range battles. In this encounter, the fighters of the brigade eliminated dozens of terrorists located and destroyed many shafts and means of warfare and found intelligence information that link the central mosque in the Darj Tufa area to the murderous terror attack that was conducted by the terrorist organization Hamas on the 7th of October and from where the terrorists emerged. Now to Israel's West Bank front in Judea and Samaria in Kfar Azun under the command of the Ephraim Brigade, which is an infantry unit brigade in the IDF. Terrorists shot and threw explosive devices at our forces. The IDF responded by identifying the building where the terrorist squad was hiding in. And at the end of an exchange of fire, they neutralized four terrorists and confiscated three Carlo-type weapons that were used by them against the troops. In the city of Kalkilia, IDF fighters were attacked by a terrorist who fired a gun towards them. There were no casualties to our forces in this incident. Also, soldiers of the IDF, the Shin Bet, and the border police arrested seven wanted persons throughout Judea and Samaria overnight. The weapons that were confiscated were found with the suspects who were arrested and handed over to the security forces for further investigation. I want to salute another fallen IDF soldier who lost his life defending the state of Israel in this war against Hamas, against Hezbollah, and against other Palestinian terror elements in the West Bank. His name is Major Miriam Moshe Gersh, 21 years of age, from Petah Tikva. He was a fighter in the Yalam unit, 
combat engineering corps and he fell in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. I would like to conclude by mentioning an investigation that was conducted by the New York Times regarding the 7th of October massacre attacks against Israel that was carried out by Hamas. This is the most shocking investigation written about the rape and abuse of women that was carried out by the Palestinian Hamas organization. And I encourage all of you to read it. Let's pray for the poor souls who went through this horrible abuse. I want to pray for the mental health of those people who saw and witnessed those things. I want to pray for the truth that every person in the world will know what Hamas did on October 7, and that Islamic terrorism in the world should end. Pray together with me for the peace of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, and for the IDF to succeed in defeating Hamas and in returning our hostages back home from captivity. And help us by sharing the truth of what is happening in Israel with the rest of the world.